dear students today we will be studying about another life process that is respiration till now we have studied about nutrition which was one of the life process now we shall move forward to respiration so what is respiration as we all have studied in earlier classes the simple term of respiration is that we are taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide from our body this process is known as respiration but now as you are in higher classes you have to study it in bit detail so respiration is the process in which whatever food which we eat through the process of nutrition it gets burnt inside the cells of our body and how this food gets burnt inside the cells of our body it the oxygen which we take in during the process of breathing or respiration it is used to burn that particular food which we take through the whole process of nutrition okay and during this burning process whatever energy is released it is stored in our body and it is used for carrying out the different activities of our body and this whole process takes place in the organelle mitochondria of the cells okay now what is the use of this energy which is obtained by the process of respiration this energy is used to make atp molecules what is atp it is adenosine triphosphate and it is formed from adp molecules adenosine diphosphate molecules so one molecule of inorganic phosphate combines with adenosine diphosphate utilizing the energy from respiration and it leads to the formation of another molecule that is adenosine triphosphate as you can recall from your ninth class science chapters that atp was known as the energy currency of the cell and mitochondria organelle was known as the power house of the cell so the whole process of respiration is taking place in the power house of the cell that is mitochondria there this energy which is obtained through the process of respiration is utilized in the formation of the atp molecules and this atp molecules are used to store this energy inside the cell whenever our body requires energy to do various activities like growth or repair in the body or digestion or any other function of our body which requires energy our body utilizes this atp adenosine triphosphate molecules the energy currency of our body and this atp is then broken down in the presence of water to form adenosine diphosphate and energy is released and this particular energy is then utilized by our body just as described right now so now this respiration is of two types we can categorize it into two types they can be aerobic respiration and an anaerobic respiration so what is the difference between the two aerobic respiration always takes place in the presence of oxygen okay and there is more production of energy in aerobic respiration whatever products which are formed in aerobic respiration they are carbon dioxide water and energy is released and this process this respiration this type of respiration takes place in most of the organisms so exactly what is happening in aerobic respiration the glucose is converted into pyruvate first of all and it this all is happening in the presence of oxygen that is why it is known as aerobic respiration and the whole process is taking place inside in the cytoplasm of the cell now this pyruvate which is formed right now it is then transferred to mitochondria and again in the presence of oxygen this pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide water and energy is released so this 
right now it uh, this whole process is summed up in a single uh, equation reaction but you will study in your higher classes that there are many pathways c4 pathway c3 pathway which are used kelvin cycle which are used for this whole process and it is quite complicated process but uh, in 10th you have to study it in this manner only you have to understand this that glucose is converted into pyruvate in the cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen then this pyruvate is entered gets entered into mitochondria again in the presence of oxygen and then it is converted into the end products are carbon dioxide water and energy now let's go to anaerobic respiration so as the name itself suggest anaerobic without oxygen so this type of respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen and as compared to the uh, aerobic respiration it produces less energy the end products here can be lactic acid or ethanol depending upon the cell in which this type of respiration is taking place and carbon dioxide and energy are also released it can take place in the muscle cells and as well as in the yeast cells so in the muscle cells there is different set of reaction which is taking place and in the yeast cell there is different set of reaction which takes place so let us first of all study the anaerobic respiration in muscle cells so you must have observed students that whenever you uh, try to run very fast you start taking deep breaths and you start getting fatigued and even sometimes it happens that uh, you consider that oxygen you are getting less less oxygen and then you are you start taking deep breaths and you may also start getting cramps in your hands or in your legs so at that time because you are running and you are unable to take much of the oxygen as much it is required by our body so there occurs some lack of oxygen in our body and due to that lack of oxygen what happens there is the accumulation of lactic acid which starts happening in our muscle cells and this accumulation of lactic acid leads to the cramping of the muscle cells of our hand or of, of our leg okay so let us now understand what reaction is taking place first of all glucose is converted into pyruvate as in the aerobic respiration this whole process takes place in the presence of oxygen and it is taking place in cytoplasm now the pyruvate here moves into the muscle cells here there is the lack of op oxygen or absence of oxygen and in the absence of oxygen this pyruvate gets converted into lactic acid and energy is released so you can clearly see the difference between both of them here pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide water and energy in the presence of oxygen and in the mitochondria in anaerobic respiration in muscle cells this pyruvate is converted into lactic acid and energy is produced and absence of oxygen is the main condition over here which is to be considered now uh, anaerobic respiration also occurs in the yeast cells so how it is happening let us summarize it with the help of this particular reaction again glucose is converted into pyruvate in the presence of oxygen and whole process takes place in cytoplasm as in the above cases we have seen just above now this pyruvate enters into the yeast cell and then there in the absence of oxygen in the yeast this pyruvate gets converted into ethanol carbon dioxide and energy is released okay so this anaerobic respiration or fate of glucose is asked many times in your board examinations so you should understand it properly now let us sum this whole process breakdown of glucose by various pathways by this flow chart this flow this kind of flow chart is also present in ncrt and you can have a look over there also this is very important slide this slide sums up the earlier slide 
the whole earlier slide okay and this is asked many times in examination like uh, tell the various products obtained by the breakdown of glucose or tell the fate of the glucose in the cells okay so you should understand it properly so now let us summarize whatever we have studied in the last slide glucose in all the three cases glucose was getting converted into pyruvate in the presence of oxygen and in the cytoplasm now this pyruvate follows three different steps as per the condition in the presence of oxygen this whole thing uh, happens in mitochondria carbon dioxide water and energy is released this is an example of aerobic respiration high amount of energy is released over here then in the absence of oxygen two conditions are there in the muscle cells and in the yeast cells so in the muscle cells pyruvate gets converted into lactic energy lactic acid and energy in the absence of oxygen while in the case of yeast cells pyruvate is converted into ethanol carbon dioxide and energy is released in the absence of oxygen so students today we will stop here thank you very much